Hi, I'm Stuart, KB1HQS, and today I'm doing a review on the Aero Antenna System for 2 meters and 440. So like most hams, I started out making my own backpacking Yagi antennas for 2 meters. first one I made was a tape measure antenna, which worked really well. The materials are cheap, anybody has a ruler and some PVC kicking around, add some coax and you have a really, really sweet antenna. problem with it is, though, is it's not easy to break down for a backpack. Uh, the steel uh, ruler that you use for the elements are really sharp and they just they don't roll up well due to the nature of the springiness of the steel. It is cheap though and it works well so it, like I said it's a good beginner's antenna. I moved on to a piano wire type antenna. I had some acrylic tubing. I used that with some very thin wire and uh, with that I was able to make the elements and the whole thing just fit in my backpack. The problem is it was too long for the actual acrylic tubing and it would get caught on brushes so in frustration that got thrown in the trash can and I decided to need something that was more durable. In my opinion there's a couple of qualities that you need to look for when purchasing an antenna for doing summits on the air activations or parks on the air activations or just general outdoor use. Number one, it needs to be lightweight but not so lightweight like the piano wire antenna that it falls apart when, it, when trying to use on top of a summit. I found that that antenna with high winds the elements would bend and it was they started to slide around and it just became really really hard to use. It was lightweight though, I'll give it that. Uh, the other quality is something that's durable that holds up. The Aero Antenna definitely meets that quality with, uh, with the aluminum that it's constructed of. So there's a couple different qualities that I was looking for when I purchased a backpacking 2 meter antenna. Uh, the ability to do 2 meters and 440 is definitely a bonus if you want to do any satellite work. Uh, ideally though I was looking for something that was lightweight, that was durable, and could be broken down into very small pieces to fit my backpack. There's nothing worse than having you know, a, a kit like this in your antenna system that's attached to your pack that's taller than your bag and then starts to get hung up on branches and eventually breaks. That's what happened to my uh, my piano wire antenna Yagi that, that I made. It, it was too tall and it would get hung up and it just it wasn't doable. So, the, so let's talk about the Aero antenna itself and why I purchased it. Number one, it's extremely durable. It's made out of aluminum. Uh, number two, it does 2 meters and 440 as I mentioned before and it has a, uh, a diplexer or something it's called duplexer or whatever your preference of choice is uh, inside the handle so you can you can uh, work satellites with it. I primarily use it for 2 meters from, uh, from summits and uh, the first thing I did of course was do some modifications to it. So the first modification I did for my aero antenna was to make a case for it because I needed a way to carry it on my backpack and aero manufacturing makes a nylon case for the system. However, I wanted something lighter and more modified for my needs. The one issue I found with this particular model is that I made these flaps on either end um, to contain the elements so when you set it up vertically they don't fall out. The problem is is that they still seem to fall out. So I added, I kind of tacked a little uh, hot glue in here to, uh, to kind of hold it in place. In the future I'll probably make a new one where the pocket this pocket here will extend all the way down so you know you have one end that's up and it'll never fall out because I've had a few occasions where elements would fall out and clang on the ground and it was really annoying. So the second modification I did whenever I using this antenna I found that it was really annoying especially with the 440 elements where they were so similar in length I couldn't tell in the field which elements went together because different, they all have different lengths. The exception of the 440 has a couple that are all the same. So what I did is I just numbered them, um, just using some, uh, just using a label maker. And the only problem is, so for example, number two is going to match up in this case with this particular one, number two. So it'd go inside the boom there like so, and that's how it would go. The issue is you can see they're already starting to peel back and in the future I'll probably offset them about, I don't know, maybe a half an inch and then put clear heat shrink over them and then that'll solve um, them as far as the durability, it'll be a lot better. 440, uh, again, like I said, there's a couple that 
they were the similar length. So what I did is I just did like the first three were numbered and then the rest of them were not numbered because they were all exact same length. So it was just a process of elimination on the 440. You do the first three and the rest are all the same and it doesn't matter who goes with who. Save some time in the field. Otherwise I found I spent way too much time trying to figure out where it goes, which elements go with which for each band. The next item was to as you can tell, this isn't exactly the uh, stock color for the aero antenna. You know, purple elements in brushed aluminum are fine. I just like the color black better. So what I did is I selected a uh, non-metallic paint, spray paint, and I prepped all the elements in the aluminum by first wiping everything down with denatured alcohol. Then I scruffed everything up with 220 to give it some bite, cleaned it again with denatured alcohol, hung it up, and then just sprayed it and taped off the, you know, coax and the, and the foam handle and whatnot. You know, as you can tell, it's not the most durable stuff, uh, but I don't really care. It's just, it's going to get scratched up regardless. And as you can tell, where the uh, where these guys go, I, I didn't add, the 441 actually goes here, but I didn't add, um, I, I didn't mark those off. I just put, I, I basically attached everything and sprayed it quick and dirty. One thing I did have an issue with, this is for the 440 attachment, and before I got these um, little BNC caps from uh, Soda Beams over in the UK, these, um, example, this is the tail end just to show you how it normally comes. This would scratch back and forth, and I kind of covered up with spray paint again, but you can still kind of see the marks there. So what I did is I just put these little caps. You don't even have to cut these or anything. They just slide right over. It's really, these are really slick. I like them. They're cheap and uh, I had them with a bunch of other stuff I got from them. So now it's protected. I don't have to worry about scratching up the paint so much. So the diplexer or duplexer, whatever you want to call it, I, everybody seems to have a different opinion on it. I don't really care either way. Uh, fits inside the handle. And I heard it was kind of fragile and if you dropped it, it would, it would break. And then you would have to go to something like this and uh, you know, it's this is kind of like a backup that I already had, so it's not a big deal. I've dropped this handle a couple times, and I haven't had any issues with it, so it still seems to work fine. But um, it's just something to keep in mind. Now, as far as use with this antenna, um, you know, I find with the numbered system and everything, it, it hooks everything hooks up really quickly. I did have one issue on Mount Agmenticus in York, Maine, recently at a soda activation, where I couldn't get it, um, I couldn't receive basically. I'm assume, I was transmitting, but I couldn't hear anybody. And every once in a while, I'd hear a blip of a signal from someone. It sounded like they were responding, but I couldn't make it out. It was the strangest thing. And I think what it was is I was just my system was getting overloaded from all the RF. The, on top of that summit are a ton of towers, and I'm I'm sure it was just an issue of uh, too much RF flying around. I don't know, but um, that was the only time I had an issue with it. And you know, I even went with my HT to the uh, NOAA Weather Channel, and I couldn't even pick them up. It was really strange. I never had that happen before. And I tried this again several times since then, and it's worked fine. So how do I carry this sucker? Good question. Backpack on. You may recall talking about breaking antennas with tree branches. Well, this is my current setup. So I got an Osprey pack. The uh, antenna case fits down inside this mesh uh, uh, pocket right here. And then I've got a strap that holds the top of it. And as you can see, if I'm standing upright, it sits right below my head, just about a hair. So it's about as good as it's going to get, you know, considering those elements and the uh, the boom itself are about yay long, and you can't do much about that. So that's how I currently carry it. It's pretty lightweight and uh, really have no complaints. So pretty happy with that. So the aero antenna system for, you know, for backpacking or just general satellite use is excellent. However, I would like to try to make a more lightweight version, something that's maybe a little bit simpler, two meter only. I never used 440, really. So having just two meter capability and lighter tubes, lighter elements. Uh, the one thing I found is that the threaded rod that fits inside the elements has a tendency to work itself loose when you unscrew it and unscrew it. Probably some, you know, thread locker would, would solve that problem, a little nail polish. Uh, however, I'd like to find a system where I can just kind of friction fit it. So you just slide it in and then use it, maybe save some time. I don't know, we'll see. So let's take a look at the overall categories for antennas that I use in determining whether I'm going to use it or not. First, of course, is cost. I believe these are running about 150 right now for this particular version. Uh, this is the breakdown um, where the boom will break in two pieces. Setup time, with my elements labeled, I could probably set this up in under, 
I don't know, I've never timed myself, honestly, but probably a couple minutes at the most. I'm pretty quick, especially if I'm doing two meters, it's obviously really quick because there's only three elements, or three sections, I should say. What about efficiency? Uh, I would say it's pretty good, pretty uh, pretty efficient. I know it's got high gain. I don't know the exact numbers off. And frankly, I don't really care. It's a Yagi antenna. Um, I've made contacts. I would say 100 plus miles. Of course, that's you know at four or five thousand feet elevation. So VHF line of sight that always helps. I'm really happy with it. It, it works great. Anything longer with more elements would just be, it would be too unruly. I wouldn't be able to backpack with it. If you were trying to get longer distances or you know weak SSB or something, then that's that's a different story. What about repairing this thing? Other than the diplexer, which is built into the handle, which I guess you could remove if you had to, to fix it. In general, I mean, it, the elements are made out of aero shafts, and it's an aluminum boom. It's, it's pretty simple. Durability, uh, thus far, I found I haven't had any issues with uh, as far as being too fragile or not being able to handle the abuse of being in the field, unlike the other antennas that I've built in the past. Complexity, it's a very simple antenna. Uh, there really isn't a whole lot to it. Just hearsay is that, the, like I said, the diplexer is extremely fragile and that the threaded rod is um, on the aero antenna shafts themselves. I know this for a fact. Have a tendency to work themselves loose and it's just annoying. Um, again, some glue or nail polish would, would solve that issue. So is this antenna able to be modified or used in a variety of different configurations? No doubt. You can definitely modify it very easily. And you can use it in, I would say, probably three different variations. You can use it two, to, uh, two meter only, 440, or both, two meter and 440, especially for satellite work. So overall, I'm very happy with, uh, with the Aero antenna. Um, like I said, I wish it was maybe like a smaller version of it that was a little more lightweight for two meters only. But uh, in general, I really have no complaints. And uh, if you're looking for something for uh, doing two meter or 440, it's a, it's a good antenna choice.